is a step-by-step -step walkthrough on setting up XSplit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and paste in chat a guide on setting up XSplit if you guys have downloaded it. Uh, this is directly from Twitch. Um, this is a guide that I will be following a little bit here. I'm kind of going to be generalizing it a little bit. Won't be following it to a complete T, but uh, definitely will be discussing it. So let me go ahead and move over kind of my notes here. And uh, keep, keep your questions coming, guys. If you guys do have questions, um, here's the link, and uh, we'll definitely get to those questions at the end of the stream. So I'm going to go ahead and swap over here um, to full screen uh, right now. And as you can see here, um, this is you know, what we're discussing right now um, with uh, you know, kind of talking about OBS and XSplit and kind of what routes we want to go here uh, and what, you know, what directions we want to go ahead and pick up for you guys. So we're going to go ahead and discuss setting up XSplit. So as you can see, I have XSplit and OBS on my desk desktop. Um, I, let's go ahead and launch XSplit for the very first time here. Um, I have gone ahead and logged in already, um, so that isn't going to come up for us here. XSplit has like a login, uh, username and password type of deal um, that you do have available to you. So waiting for XSplit to load, uh, looks like it'll take a second. As you can see, it's going to go ahead and log me in. So here's XSplit. Um, this is what XSplit looks like when you first go ahead and get it. Um, it's very, very basic, very easy. Um, and uh, the way that XSplit works is, you know, we'll kind of talk about it a little bit here with navigation. So we have scenes. Um, so, so scenes are, think of it, like you checked out my channel when I first you know, started streaming tonight. You saw the big Octane Pro type of logo. That can, that's a scene. Then you saw me in front of the camera, uh, full screen. That's a scene. Now you're seeing my desktop. That is a scene. Um, so these are all, you know, different scenes. So, um, <clears throat> you know, that's what these scenes are located down here. And we're going to get more into building scenes uh, coming up here. On the left-hand side, the scene sources, these are the items within each scene. So, um, and we'll get into those in a second here. So, let's go into setting up, um, you know, XSplit. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to the top and go to Broadcast and Add Channel and then down to Twitch. So, here's our information here. Um, and uh, we can go ahead and this is kind of a wizard that kind of walks you through it. Um, I'm going to recommend that you skip the wizard. So go to skip wizard at the bottom. And here is kind of the default screen. So I'm going to type in my information here. That is the channel. Username is the channel name. So like it is Octane Pro SCII. So that would be twitch.tv slash and then you put in your username. Then go ahead and put in your password uh, for your channel that you use for XSplit. So, or I'm sorry, for um, this is for Twitch. I'm sorry, when you log into Twitch. So this is the password for when you log into Twitch. The channel is going to automatically populate in there. And now we have server. So I want you to click the drop down box next to server. And you're going to notice that you have all these different servers all over the place. So what we're going to look for is what we want to see is under the last category, what the best uh, ping time is. And so for me right now, as you guys can see, you know, US Ashburn, Virginia, um, you know, is the best um, server for me as you can tell just by looking through all of that there. So we're gonna go ahead and select the best server. I'm not going to recommend that you just leave it on automatic. You want to take it off, 100%. So select a server. So we've gone ahead and selected our server. And now if you're inter, now you see this little test bandwidth button in the top right hand corner, ignore it for now, we'll come back to it in a few minutes. So the next option down is video encoding. This is that entire process with the CPU. This setup is super, super important. Super important, guys. So the Kodak area, leave the same. It's grayed out. You can't change it. Don't worry about it. The second area is max bit rate. So this is what we were talking about with your upload speeds. So we ran a um, bandwidth test there, uh, if you guys are just joining us. And uh, you will notice that on the bandwidth test, it told me I had 8.99 megabytes down. Okay, so to round it to make it super easy math, just to make it easier for you guys, there is a thousand kilobytes, so the KBS, thousand kilobytes in one megabyte. So I had 8.99, so that we could just round it and say I have 8,990 kilobytes. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. So if I had 8.99 and my max bit rate, uh, you know, this is asking me what I want to dedicate for XSplit for streaming uh, using my upload speeds. 
Well, I'm not going to put 8.99 in here because that would mean that XSplit takes up all of my internet's upload. And that would completely, your, nothing would work. So you don't want to do that. So I have 8.99. And, you know, something to discuss, uh, you know, we kind of talked about is, you know, what's, what, what's, what's minimal, what's recommended, and what's optimal. So here, here's just some numbers for you guys to recommend. So if you guys have 1.5, let's say you did that test, that speed test that we talked about, speedtest.net, and you had 1.5 megabytes down, I would recommend that you put this number here at 700, okay? That is if you had 1.5 megabytes down. Now, if you ran that test and you had three megabytes, okay, you had three megabytes, I'd recommend you put this at 1500. That's 1 1.5 megabytes down there. So three megabytes, I'd recommend at one or at 1500. If you had five megabytes, I'd recommend that you put this at 3000. Okay. If you had anywhere between five and 10, which can vary, I would leave this at around 3000 to 3300. So anywhere between five and 10, I do 3,000 or 3,300. Now, if you have 10 or if you have more than 10, let's say you have 15 up or 20 up, I would recommend you do 5,000, okay? Reason being is we're not doing our entire upload pipe. We're just doing a portion of it. Um, and so keep that in mind. So for this exercise, I'm gonna go ahead um, and, and take a look here um, at, yes, you're correct. It's bytes per second, you are correct. So, you know, kilobytes per second. That's what that PS is. You're cor completely correct there uh, in chat. I'm trying to, trying to make it very basic. So please understand, I'm not trying to get into too much of the technicalities. Um, so for, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and put mine at 3,000. Um, I have 8.99 uh, megabytes uh, up, but, you know, I'm comfortable at 3,000. So our next mode here is VBR versus CBR. And I don't know why they defaulted at VBR. But if you guys go ahead, um, the guide that I linked you guys in chat, chat for XSplit is right here, uh, right in front of us right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and in here, uh, I'm trying to see where it's at. Um, anyways, um, XSplit, rec they recommend with XSplit to go with CBR. So go ahead and change that to CBR. Okay. So. That, that's our first step. So we've gone, the, the big thing we focused on is bit rate, which was, the, was, was a huge, very important thing when it comes to streaming. We talked about CPUs and we talked about bit rate. So now we're gonna talk, so, so we, we implemented our number for our upload, okay? Now hit the gear and we wanna go ahead and look in here. And once you're in here, um, I'm going to recommend that you set your max keyframe interval and all this guys is in that guide that I linked you guys in chat. Set this to two, okay? And now here's that reflection of that 3000, the, the bit rate uh, up there and the bit rate here will match, need to match every single time, okay? Now for the encoder preset, this is the encoding and this is what we talked about with your CPU and this is huge guys, this is so important. You know, the CPU and the, the upload number that we set for the bit rate there will make or break your streaming experience. So we talked to, take a look here. You have super fast and slow. Well, to an average person, they would think, okay, I want ever, you know, I want the fastest. I want the best. So I'm going to put it on super fast. Super fast is the worst, guys. Slow is the best. The slower the encoding, the better it looks. Okay. So let me say that again. The slower the encoding preset, the better it looks. So if you take a look here, the default is very fast. And there's a nice little pop-up that comes up. Under super fast, it says lowest compression, lowest CPU usage recommended for small CPU. So super fast is, is something I would recommend for those of you guys that are trying to stream with a dual core. Um, and as I said before, the, the slower the encoding, the better the quality. So super fast is not going to look very good, but guys, if you're, if you're trying to stream with a dual core, um, you know, you're not going to do much better than super fast without a doubt. So now we have very fast, faster, fast, medium, and slow. So let's jump to the opposite side of the spectrum. Slow, high, very high compression, very high CPU usage. Don't use without a monster CPU. <clears throat> 
none of you out there have a monster CPU. I want to put that out there right now. An i7 is not a monster CPU. That slow encoding is literally, you're looking at CPUs that, uh, motherboards that have dual sockets. So motherboards that support two CPUs, like two i7s could, could handle slow. No one else is going to handle that. I don't even run that, and I have a separate dedicated machine. Um, medium is very, very aggressive here. Even with an i7 series, I don't recommend it. Reason being is because of the amount of um, amount of your CPU that it is going to use. <clears throat> I'm going to recommend that if you have an i7 that you use fast. So if you're running an i7 series, I'm going to recommend that you use fast. Uh, you can get away with it right here. Now these recommendations they have on here are great, but they're not literal. They, you know, it doesn't make sense. Um, you know, they're they're kind of like, hey, this is what we recommend, but it's not like real world tested with that data. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. So fast would be great for an i7, real beefy quad core. Um, I'm going to recommend if you're using. Um, an i5, I'm going to recommend that you guys look at very fast and keep it at the default, or you look at faster. Um, now, these types of things that I'm talking about here, guys, between the video encoding and the bitrate are experimental. You're going to have to find what works best for you, and we're going to go into adjusting, you know, kind of what, you know, how you can troubleshoot this a, a little bit later on. So, we're going to go ahead for testing purposes and just put it on fast right here, Okay. Don't touch anything else. We, we set the max keyframe to be two. We also changed the encoder preset to be fast. And the uh, VBV buffer was already set. Um, <clears throat> and we're just going to go ahead and jump out of that there. Your audio. Um, your audio, believe it or not, can be set where it's at right now. The, the Kodak is fine. Um, your audio, literally 128 is fine. You don't need to bump it up to 192 and, and try to you know get better audio quality out of it. People are there to watch the video. Uh, the audio is just a perk. The 128 between 128 and 192, you're not going to see a huge difference if you're just watching like a video game, uh, but you'll definitely notice it like music and stuff like that. Um, so I'm not going to recommend that you change it. So 128 is what Twitch recommends. We're going to leave it there, and we can keep this at stereo. You don't want it on mono. There's a little button right here. It says interweave audio and video in one RTP MP, RTMP channel. Uncheck that. We don't want it. Now, if you guys want local copies of all of your recordings, um, go ahead and just check the box here. Automatically save recordings on my local hard drive. So if you guys have, you know, uh, make sure that you guys, if you guys have questions, we'll go into them here uh, towards the end. But go to the ask.fm website. Um, I'll go ahead and put it back in chat as well, um, and, and we'll go over kind of Q&A questions at the end. Uh, I'll go ahead and post it in chat, though. So we just went ahead. This is the first step we did, guys, setting up XSplit. We'll set up the settings in here, and we're just going to go ahead in here. Okay. Okay. So um, we're going to get into troubleshooting and testing bandwidth um, a little bit later on in the segment here. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to kind of bring up my notes here so I have them available uh, following along what I want to do here. Um, so right now we're going through XSplit and how to set up XSplit. So we just went on into the settings and how to set up the settings um, within the stream here. Um, you know, very, very good idea there. So now what we're going to kind of do is go over some additional features within XSplit and how to really get started. So um, bottom here we have a microphone. You know, uh, this is your microphone volume up and down. And you can mute it at any time and unmute it. And here's the same thing with the speaker volume. This is... The volume of uh, what it, you know, you can mute this, and this isn't going to mute your speakers. This is just going to mute the speakers to the stream. So this goes ahead. Uh, the, the the speaker, guys, keep in mind, is the default speaker on your computer. So um, keep that in mind that whatever your default speaker is set to on your computer, if it's your speakers, if it's your headphones, that's what it's capturing right here and producing out to the stream. And you can turn it down, and you can mute it at any time. So um, <clears throat> the the it, whenever you're ready, I'm just going to kick it off, show you guys here. Whenever you're ready to go live, you just go up to broadcast, and then you go ahead and select what you'd like to go live. So I, if you want to go live on uh, you know, my stream, Smite Games, Smite Tube, Smite Pro, you can go ahead and do that real easily. Um, you can also do a local recording too. Um, you know, wanted to go ahead and um, 
you can go ahead and go into your local recording and you can set the settings up within your local recording um, and you guys can go ahead and you know make the changes as you need to so you could just you could let's say you just want to make uh, YouTube videos you could do that with the local recording option without a doubt right there so um, <clears throat> that is you know okay how to set up the channel for you outside of that you won't really have to mess with any of this other stuff here but you can play around with it a little bit so uh, our next step uh, you know kind of going into it is adding in overlays um, and add, and adding in images you know you know we don't have anything right now if we were to go live it would be a black screen for people so we want to go into detail as to how to add things so let's say scene one we're gonna call this um, out of uh, out of game okay and uh, scene two we're gonna call it in game and scene three, you could call it um, be right back. And scene four, you could call it full screen. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, guys, we'll be doing OBS after uh, this exploit tutorial. So um, we've gone ahead and named everything here. Um, now, see, you have all these scenes you can work with. We're not going to get into full details there. So out of game, I go ahead and click on out of game, and nothing's happening, you know, because if you look over here under uh, scene sources, it's just blank. So we need to add something. So let's go into add, and we're going to go into, um, you know, into, let's say we have a few different options here. Uh, yes, these will be posted on YouTube. Um, so we can add a camera. You can, now this is for out of game. So you can do a whole bunch of different things with overlays if you want to. But let's say we want to go ahead and let's add media. Okay. This is for out of game. And so it's going to ask us, okay, well, what do you want to add? And so I'm actually going to add um, an overlay up on here. I'm going to add one of the Smite Talk overlays. So this is just an image, guys. Okay. So let's go ahead and add an overlay here. When let's see, who do I want to pick? Let's pick. Uh, let's pick Squiddish. Uh, we had Squiddish on here. So let's go ahead and pick Squiddish, and I'm going to hit OK. Now it just brought in. See, we have an image in here. You see right here under Out of Game and under Scene Sources, we now have this uh, path to the image I added. So I went ahead and add, this is for out of game. So you're like, hey, this is kind of small. You know, how do I change this? Well, first thing you need to look at is what resolution you want to be streaming at. So go up to view and resolution. And right now we're streaming at 360p, 640 by 360. We don't really want that. Um, so we could go ahead and change that. And for testing purposes, um, we're just going to set it here um, to, let's say, 68, 1680 by 1050. So let's say you have a little bit older of a monitor. Wow, it's real big now. You see that? All of a sudden, we got super big. 1680 by 1050. Well, what you can do is, is you can go in here to view and scale viewpoint, and you can make it smaller, just so it's easier to work with as a window. Um, so we're still up there and good to go. Um, <clears throat> so we've gone ahead and seen that there. Um, you know, pretty, pretty easy. Um, once again, guys, if you guys have any questions, you can just post them right over here, and I'll answer them uh, at the end the best I can. So we're streaming right now our resolution 1680 by 1050. Okay, great. Um, now, you will not always be able to stream at your monitor's resolution. Um, keep in mind, you know, we kind of talked about, you know, some of the things like CPU and upload speed. Well, the resolution you're streaming at, you know, the higher the resolution, the more taxing it's going to be on that encoding. So I'm going to recommend, you know, a lot of people start out right here, 1280 by 720. Start out here, guys, if you guys are just getting started. You might not be even able to handle this, to be honest. So we have our resolution set and our frame rate. And when you think of frame rate, everyone's like, oh, I need to stream at 60 frames per second because that's what I game at. Incorrect. I'm going to recommend that you guys sit at 29.97 uh, frames per second. It's a weird option. Um, there, there's a bunch of research on kind of the best setup versus 30 frames per second. So 29.97 is what you want for your frames per second. Okay. So we handled frames, we handled resolution. So in front of us here, we have our scene. And we went ahead and added this graphic. Now nice, you have these nice little uh, borders around the outside. So I'm going to put it up here and drag it. There we go. <clears throat> now we've gone ahead and added an image in there. Uh, this is just for the out of game image. Now keep in mind, you know, hey, you got these black bars. Why do I have these black bars? That's because the image resolution is different then the resolution I'm set up and streaming at. So you could come in here resolution if you needed to. You could go ahead and change it. There we go. That fits, right? So I just changed the resolution there to make it fit a little bit better. 1280 by 800. Um, <clears throat> so 
Now the next question is, you know, hey, what, what if we want to add, you know, when we're out of game, when we're talking with people in chat, you know, waiting for the next cue to pop in a smite game or something like that, maybe I want people to see, like, my camera. So you can go in here to add and go to camera and select your camera. Now this camera is going to be point, you know, I'm going to add the camera in here. This camera is pointing directly up in the air. This is a spare camera I just had sitting around. So as you can see, I can pick it up here. Hello, I see you. Here we go. We'll turn it this way. There we go. That's better. Okay. So, um, you know, maybe we can lean this over here. Uh, it's just kind of like sitting here on the desk. Doesn't even have like a stand or anything like that. Okay. So there's our camera there. Um, now keep in mind, you know, these are like layers, guys. So we could take the camera, see in the bottom left, and drag it below the overlay. And look at that. All of a sudden, the overlay goes over top of the camera. See? Look at that. Ooh. So we can go ahead and take this here and, you know, fit it inside of our area. And boop, there we go. And then we got a camera. And look, now we have a nice little overlay set up there. Simple and easy. So this is a spare camera, guys. Um, so, um, you know, that is, is how you add. You can also go in here and add different things. You can add screen regions. You know, let's say we wanted to capture uh, the chat, okay? I'm going to go ahead and capture the chat, which I have on another monitor. Look at that. There's the chat right there. So we can go ahead so, and just uh, kind of go speed through this a little bit faster than what we were. Um, the pace is a little slower than what I wanted. So um, pretty much we were talking about overlays and how to add overlays and, and how to add scenes within XSplit. Um, so uh, pretty much I'm going to swap back over. We're in XSplit right now. We did go over out of game overlays. Let's go over, you know, kind of in game. You pretty much can go to add and screen region and just select the screen region. So let's say we wanted this first monitor here. Select the whole screen region and bam, it's stream inception. That's what you're seeing right there. Um, and, uh, you know, because we're capturing the screen, so that's why it's working. When you go ahead and play your video game, you'll go ahead and minimize it down, play your video game, and then, you know, if you need to pull up the stream and swap over after a game or something like that to jump out of game, you necessarily can. Um, and uh, so that'll capture everything within the game there. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, things that we'll touch base on here about overlays and stuff like that later on. I'll give you guys a link of a whole bunch of different overlays that you guys can use for streaming in-game if you're interested. Um, so a bunch of stuff out there. Uh, but I'll give you a whole list of uh, uh, smite overlays that you guys can feel free to use if, if you'd like to. Um, so let me see what else here we have on our list. Um... Plugins, uh, something I wanted to show you guys. So um, the, one of the benefits of XSplit, which I recommend for people, um, is if you go down to add, and then you go to more, you see how they have more sources here? You go to more sources, and you see all these cool little plugins in here? You can add them. So if you wanted to add a title, you know, you can install that, and click it and install it, and then it adds it to one of your options down here. So now, if we get out of here and go to add and title, we can now go ahead and say hello chat room. If I can spell chat room right. And hit OK. And now look, now it just added this text in there. So there's a lot of cool plugins um, within um, here. You can do add, more sources, and you have a bunch of other stuff. Image slideshow, a starboard, which is really good for StarCraft 2, a video playlist, which OBS does not have a video playlist at all, which is nice. And a bunch of other stuff. So, um, some cool features in there with XSplit. So, um, there was a question that came in over Ask.fm regarding, um, you know, graphics cards. You know, we talked about CPUs. What about graphics cards? Y your graphics card has no effect on your stream, um, on, on your streaming process. Now, your graphics card is going to matter depending on the, you know, what quality that the graphics card is producing. If you have a crappy graphics card, it's not going to look good for people that are watching it. Uh, if you have a good graphics card, you know, it's going to look better, but it has no effect. Like, there's no transition. You know, it comes down to your CPU and your upload speed, and then, you know, what type of resolution that you're streaming at. Do you think someone could make it as a popular streamer with 1.4 upload? No. You're not going to be able to set your um, a buffer and uh, that, that we talked about there within XSplit. And what I'm talking about is right here. Um, edit, and then you go into your channel. And right here, this bit rate here, you're not going to be able to set that bit rate. Like you, think of it. You have 1.4 up. So you want to do about half of that if you're lucky, about 700. 
and you'll be lucky if you get by um, with you know not having stuff issues. So the next section I want to go into, guys, is going to be talking about how to troubleshoot issues within XSplit. Um, so let's say you go ahead and start streaming, and uh, at the very top of this bar here, right at the top, where it says XSplit Broadcaster, at the very top area, you're going to see um, it light up red when you're streaming. And it's going to tell you drop frames. And if you have people that are complaining, oh, it's lagging or you're getting drop frames everywhere, this is what you need to look at. First, what you need to do, guys, is right-click on the bottom. Uh, if you're running Windows, go to Start Manager and bring up your, your uh, Task Manager. I'm sorry, Task Manager. And then click Performance. And the one thing you want to watch at is when you go ahead and start streaming and you're streaming and you get drop frames, take a look at this. Is your CPU getting maxed? Okay. If your CPU is maxing out, you want to come in here and go into your settings and I hit the gear and you want to change this. You're, you're, that means that your, pre, your encoding is too much for your computer to handle and you need to go ahead and turn it down. Um, so you want to go ahead and go, let's say we were on faster and our CPU was maxing out, you want to drop it down to one level if need be. Um, if you check your CPU usage and it's not maxing itself out and you're wondering, hmm, you know, what else could it be? Um, it could be that you set your frame rate too high, that you came in here, that it's, you set it to 60 frames per second when in reality I recommend 29.97. That could be a reason why you're getting drop frames um, or people are complaining of it lagging. Uh, another issue is you selected a resolution that's too aggressive. And, you know, when that CPU is maxed out, one, it could be the encoding, or two, it could be that your resolution is way too high. You know, even though that you want to stream at 1280 by 800, maybe you need to stream at 960 by 600 because your computer just can't handle it. So that's another thing that you need to look at um, when you're having issues there. Uh, once again, you know, so what you want to you want to really bring up this task manager and you want to look at it and see, you know, what's maxing out. Finally, if your CPU is not maxing out at all, you're not having any issues, you need to come in here and your problem is your upload speed. If your CPU is not maxing out at all, um, you need to come in under bitrate and you need to come in and, you know, 3000 isn't going to cut it for you. Maybe you need to try 2500. Stream, see if you get rid of that dropped uh, um, frames and then go back and forth. It, it's a trial and error messing around with your bitrate, messing around with your resolution. <laughs> Messing around with your uh, frames per second, messing around with the encoding. Um, you know, it is trial and error until you figure out what works best for your system and what works best for your upload speed. There is no lucky perfect number for you. Uh, you know that someone can tell you. You guys can ask me all you want, but I can't give you the most accurate number because it really comes down to those four variables: your bit rate, which is right here, your encoding, which is right here. your resolution and your frame rate what earbuds do you recommend for tweaked audio um i use the parkour ones i really like them so guys that was kind of a little quick overview of xsplit um let's go ahead